Welcome along. My name is Daniel Gibbs from uh, from Posture Podiatry. Uh, I'm a podiatrist. Yes. Represent. Uh, nice to have you come on board. Uh, we're just going to talk a little bit about the feet and how they have an impact on the rest of the body. Um, I won't hold you for too long, but uh, feel free. We'll make this a bit interactive, so feel free to. Uh, throw out any questions or any concerns. We might even get one of you up here and, and have a look at what's going on as well um, so we can talk about it. So, who can tell me a bit about the feet? Who can tell me how many bones are in each foot? It's quite a complex structure, isn't it? Sorry? 26, very good. We've got the right answer down here. We've got a lot of joints, a lot of ligaments, a lot of muscles, a lot of tendons. Uh, in fact, it's quite a complex structure, and the way the foot works, in fact, I'll just put up the uh, thing here. Obviously, this person's got a few more uh, than most over here. But uh, <laughs> um, Essentially, the foot being such a complex structure, it is the foundation for the body. It's, the, it's your connection to the ground. It's, uh, it's the base by which the rest of your, your body works. And you may be surprised to know that um, studies just being done and uh, one in five Australians have foot pain at any one time. I mean, if we had a show of hands right now, is anyone here currently experiencing any pain with their feet uh, at the moment? One, two, three, four, five, six. So six of a group of uh, around 20. So that statistic basically holds, doesn't it? And, uh, and you're not alone <laughs> if, uh, if you've got foot pain. Uh, they do a lot of work. In fact, 128,000 kilometres in a lifetime, that's enough to walk around the Earth three times. Uh, and we can imagine that as we, uh, as we get older, these uh, wear and tear things can, uh, can start to uh, present. Uh, but more than that, there are things that we can do to help the foot to function better, help the body to function better while you are uh, here now. So, do you think this car is going to go very far with a wheel alignment like this here? <laughs> You can imagine that um, if our feet are the same, say one foot rolling in more than the other, it can be an indication of other things going on. And just like a joint should move congruently, um, if we've got a joint that's uh, perhaps not quite moving along the, the correct plane, we can, uh, we can imagine that it won't be too long before something wears out somewhere along the line. And uh, often chronic pain or, or problems that just won't go away can be simply a result of uh, a joint alignment or uh, wear and tear in places where perhaps it didn't need to be in the first place. Um, let's, often, often when we look at the feet, when we look at the body, we like to go back to basics. And uh, I guess we could go right back to uh, a very fundamental principle. What do muscles do? What are muscles there for? They create movement. They, Help, they look good. <laughs> muscles are protectors. In fact, muscles are great protectors. Muscles, uh, muscles protect joints. And if the joint's not working properly, then guess what's happening to the muscle? The muscle's working very hard to hold that joint, to protect it, so that you don't overextend and cause damage to a joint. Interestingly, with something like the elbow, in the, in the last 3% of joint movement of the elbow, that's when the surrounding muscles here fire up so that you don't overextend and cause damage to the joint. We've got lots of little joints in the foot. We've got lots of little joints through the spine. And the position of these joints or the movement of these joints determines whether a muscle around that joint is trying to protect it or whether it's relaxed and allowing it to move properly. Who would like to be a little volunteer and we'll give a little bit, bit of a demonstration as to how a muscle, uh, a muscle works. Is there anyone feeling like they'd like to come up here? Come on up. Yeah, come on up. Hey, give me a hand, give me a hand. All right. Do you have any pain in your feet or legs or anything no, like that? No, 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 very good. Okay, can I get you to take your shoes and socks off and just sit on the bed here with your feet facing this way? I don't smell. No, oh, good. I don't like smelly feet. <laughs> no, just kidding, just kidding. It goes with the job. Okay, have a seat up here and just place your feet here. All right, so. Actually, just stand up for me. I want to check something first before I do this. So, look, lovely, lovely, lovely. Excellent. Okay, 
All good. Have a seat. I, I won't go over that, otherwise we could be here for a while. And uh, I've done it before, but uh, let's go, we're going to do this one here. That's one of your... Basically, I want you to turn your foot in this direction and hold it there as strong as you can. Don't let me push it out, okay? And again. And again. All right. And this one here, hold in there as strong as you can. Ooh, there we go. And again. All right, so it'll be this one here. Okay, so what I'm feeling for is, is there any weakness in this, posi in this position? Is there, say, a muscle that's doing a lot of work to protect it? Now, you're a muscly, muscly guy, aren't you? you know, you're, so you're considered to be quite strong. But did it feel like you weren't able to, to resist as much on that one there? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit there? Okay, so bend the knee for me. Now, I'm not going to break his leg. <laughs> He walks on these legs, which puts a lot more force through them than I can. But what I want to do is just, just relax there. Good. I'm just going to do a little jolt behind the knee. Good. All right, you're right there? Yep. Okay. Now hold your foot in there as strong as you can. Good. And again? Does that feel different? Yeah, I can hold it more. You can, you can hold it stronger. So the situation here is a muscle is working hard to protect the joint. The joint that we're looking at was just behind here. Why did I pick that joint? Because when I saw him standing there, I thought it might be a good one to pick on. Um, <laughs> essentially, what's happened is it was working hard to protect, so it didn't have any strength left over to actually function. So what I've done is I've just sort of just helped that joint move a little bit better, perhaps released it a little bit. So now the muscle goes, oh, I can do what, I, what I'm supposed to do all of a sudden, and we've got access to that strength again. So you can see here how a joint that's not quite moving properly, the muscle's so busy protecting it, if you release the joint, now the muscle can do what it's supposed to do. Thank you. Let's give him a hand. <laughs> Come over seat. So can anyone see how that might have an impact through the rest of the body? If one joint isn't able to do what it's supposed to do and the way those muscles are trying to protect, it leads to a situation where the body's trying to deal with itself and we get this compensation happening. You might be sitting in your chair right now and you would have been sitting in one spot for a little while and then after a little while you might you know, shift your body weight, change what you're doing. Now in order for that to happen, what your body's done is it's gone through a whole process of assessing where you are now, adjusting things slightly, you know, just to keep you comfortable and then it predicts, okay, I'm about to get some pain soon unless I do something about this. And just at that point where you're about to get a little bit uncomfortable, the body changes things. Now it can start that whole process again of assessing, adjusting, predicting and changing. Now this doesn't just happen when you're sitting, this happens when you're walking, every step that you take, when you're running, uh, when you're lying in bed at night asleep. You're not even conscious of the fact that you're rolling in bed avoiding problems. And your body's always trying to avoid pain but it needs to have the ability to avoid pain. That's the key. So in our situation that we had before, if, what, what was your name again? If Bradley needed to use that joint to avoid something else, and it was too busy already doing something else, then a whole chain starts to, to take effect through the body. And we create a situation where everything's so wound up, and it needs something to just release it and let it sort of work correctly. Now, are we all, we're all on board here? What makes sense? In those situations where we've got chronic pain, this is often a situation, say if you've rolled your ankle at netball three years ago and it's just never been the same since, perhaps maybe along the line there, one of those joints has just got itself into a position where it needs a bit of protection. And the body's been doing that all along very well, but at the detriment for its ability to actually function down the track. It may just be that actually releasing some of those adhesions in the joint has, you know when you get food stuck in your teeth? It moves those teeth joints, just that slightest amount, a thousandth of a millimetre. But it's enough to drive you insane until you actually get rid of it. And I've seen situations where people have had long-standing chronic pain and it's simply that little adhesion in the joint and all we need to do is floss the joint, you know. <laughs> get it so it's moving properly, release the muscles that are involved and create an environment where the body's working well. Now, where do orthotics come in here? Well, perhaps maybe we don't need to just go straight for, okay, let's stick some orthotics in your shoes and hold you in a good position. Perhaps maybe what we can do first is allow the body to function better first 
And then if it keeps going back into old habits, we can use, um, we'll come back to that one, we can use orthotics to actually maintain it so that you don't keep going back into old habits. So it's not about them fixing the problem, it's about we allow our body to function better first, everything's working well, and then perhaps by having the right support, it stops you having to rely on coming in and seeing me to, <laughs> to, to get various adjustments or whatever the case may be. So you've got power for your body to actually function correctly um, and not go back into old habits. Um, preventing future injuries, I did skip over that one here. Uh, the environment we, we're working, you know, we look at uh, how you're sitting, how you're standing, our walking patterns, um, our posture, you know, if things are doing this, you can imagine that after a little while, uh, perhaps the body won't be able to deal with those various things that you've got. We've kind of covered a little bit with strength and, and flexibility issues as well. So, I guess unless we have any other, other questions at the moment, essentially what we're looking at here is the body's ability to deal with itself. If you, if you take nothing else away from here, take away muscles protect joints. If a joint's not working properly, it sets off a whole chain where the body needs to adjust and compensate. People have had chronic pain for a long time. Perhaps all we need to do is create that new normal for the body so that it can work effectively and then maintain it long term so that you don't fall back into old habits. And uh, by taking that approach, we can see um, a lot of things can be, uh, can be dealt with quite successfully. Does anyone have any questions? Do you recommend people walk barefoot? Yeah, um, walking barefoot can be quite good. Obviously there's a whole uh, barefoot debate here where uh, do we go barefoot or not? If you're an office worker and you've been sitting at your desk all day and then you all of a sudden read an article that says, okay, uh, barefoot running is great and you think I'm going to do a marathon and get out there and go barefoot, um, the body's not prepared for this. Since we were very young, we've been walking on hard grounds, we've been slapping shoes on kids' feet, you know, before they're, they're actually developed correctly. And that can set us down a, a path where we're reliant on shoes to actually hold us properly. But yes, walking barefoot can be really good to actually help strengthen uh, the, the correct parts of the feet. But instead of just going straight from shoes to barefoot, it's probably a good idea to sort of train the correct muscles to be able to handle you going barefoot so that you don't put yourself in a position where you're going to cause an injury um, because it's being overused uh, and it's not used to being overused. So yes, going foot barefoot can be good, but as part of a wider program where perhaps you're strengthening the correct muscles, you're training your foot to be able to handle going barefoot, perhaps maybe you like to start on the soft sand at the beach and that'll help to in encourage those, uh, those little muscles within the foot to get going. So, uh, so yeah. They do, don't they? Calves get very sore. And part of the reason for that is how the big toe is functioning. And uh, perhaps if you swing by later, I can show you how if we can get the big toe moving properly, then the calf muscles don't have to do so much work to actually lift you from one step to the next. Uh, and that way we can reduce the, uh, the type of tension that's going on through the calf muscles there. Anyone else have any thoughts or questions before we close up? All very good. Well, thank you guys for, for listening and, uh, and I'm more than happy to answer any questions uh, over at the stand over here and, uh, and if, you, if you do have any thoughts or any, um, any ideas or concerns or things that you think, oh, maybe, uh, maybe this could have been because of this, uh, come over and bring it up and we'll have a chat about it. So thanks very much, guys.